Hi. Right, sorry about the lack of videos. It's the summer holiday, so I do have to spend some time with the children, but we should be back to the normal schedule soon. Uh, to start us off, we've got this launch Scantle. This is the CRP49C. Quite a unusual form factor on this device. It's really quite long. It's got some buttons at the bottom if you prefer actually pressing buttons, but we do have a five inch touchscreen at the top here. And this unit is kind of designed for the DIYer. Uh, possibly the advanced DIYer at this price point. This one has unlimited updates, uh, which is a big plus really, because on some of these Scantles, the updates after the first or second year can be really quite expensive and outweigh the price of the tool. At some point, you're almost likely to uh, be better off buying a new tool every year, which is a bit of a waste really. So uh, this one, free lifetime updates. It is able to read uh, DTCs as well as reset and read the data streams uh, and then it does have uh, some additional resets like a DPF reset, uh, parking brake, injector resets, ABS system, um, reset the battery management system and the steering angle and also the tyre pressure monitoring but I'll put a list up on the screen of its reset functions. Uh, now this one is battery operated but it ha has a cabled interface to the vehicle diagnostic port and there's also a charging port at the bottom there so when you do plug it into your vehicle it will charge the battery in the unit as you can see it shuts off the screen when it's running off battery but once you plugged in it will keep the screen powered up so we can turn it on here and as I said it's got this really nice display not particularly helpful for review videos where it's a portrait display uh, but you can see at the top there we've got our usual diagnosis then the OBD2 stuff resets upgrades some information and then just various settings like Wi-Fi, uh, screen brightness. So let's plug this into the car, see how long it takes to read. Now, I've been doing quite a lot of work on this car, so I'm expecting possibly a few uh, codes. They shouldn't be active codes, they should be history codes if they are in there, uh, but we'll see when we plug this in. Right, so we've got it plugged into the car and the car has started and quite handily it shows you the battery voltage at the top so you can check that it's charging properly. Uh, which is always quite useful. We'll click on Diagnose. Now, it can do an auto-detect, but that sometimes takes quite a bit of time. It has to work out the protocol and everything. It doesn't always work properly, so we'll just pick BMW straight away uh, and then press OK. And then we'll do the automatic search. This should be OK. We'll get the VIN now. It knows that it's talking to a BMW, so this speeds up quite a bit quicker. picked up the car so we'll click next, um, cycle the ignition. Right so it's been about 15 minutes now and it's still searching for modules. I'm sure it was quicker than this. Uh, after this I will try it in the Ford and just see if it's quicker in there but um, yeah still going. Okay so 20 minutes later it says uh, no system detected and make sure the diagnostic connector is connected, ignition on uh, so this auto scan didn't seem to work, which is a bit of a pain, but I think we can do the system selection if we click on drive here and select the ECM. And yeah, it detects it absolutely fine, so I don't know why the auto scan didn't work. Um, so we've got module information, that's the screen that popped up before. We can read fault codes, so no fault codes, which is good. And we can read data streams, so let's have a look at the operating values. Uh, and we've got things like the accelerator, battery voltage, and if we pick a couple of those, it narrows down a list and shows them together. So if I blip the accelerator, you can see that goes up in real time, updating about once per second or so. And we can plot a graph if we want to. So yeah, that all seems to work quite nicely. Uh, on this uh, BMW, they grouped the um, data streams by their functions so we can look at things like the smooth running values together and that saves you going through one big list so we can see uh, cylinder one to six all very close to zero so that all looks good and um, we've got things like uh, idle here so we can select those, press OK, and it shows you the values for those. Then we can go through to OBD2. So this is the generic data. This just talks to the ECU, but it has some stuff about emissions as well and that kind of stuff. Uh, but it often has some data streams that you don't have on the uh, brand-specific diagnostic. So it has to go through and work out what protocol 
Right, so we're in there now and we can read live data. This sometimes has some data streams that weren't available in the other mode. Uh, so we can just pick a few of these and look at them together. And there we go, we've got the throttle position, uh, airflow, calculated load value, those kind of things. And if I blip the accelerator, we should see that change. So all quite normal there. And it does have a few things to do with the O2 sensors and emissions. Let's see if anything's supported on this BMW. And yeah, it says OK. I don't know what these tests are, but I think these are some of the readiness tests. So um, OBD2 functionality. We've also got some resets available. And these are the resets that are available for this unit. Now, I'm not sure if these are all included or whether you have to pay for some of these. Uh, but I have just changed the oil today. So we'll go to oil reset. Um, now, I don't know if this allows you to do it electronically or whether it just gives you the instructions on how to reset it because I think even on the BMW software, it tells you how to do it manually uh, using the buttons on the dashboard. So let's see what happens. We do have to pick the car, switch on ignition. Right, so I've selected maintenance reset. This should be an oil reset. It does have maintenance correction as well. So I think this is more for vehicles that have all of the service information stored on the computer rather than a physical logbook. So it's probably not as applicable to this particular vehicle, but it's going through and selecting every single module again. So I think I'm gonna move over to the Ford and just see if anything is quicker because the main complaint I've got about this unit so far is it's just really, really slow. I think we've been at it for quite a while now, probably about an hour. And most of the time has been spent waiting for it searching for modules. So let's change car. Right, we're in the Ford and I just plugged it in and it automatically detected what car it was very quickly and it's already trying to scan the system and this one seems to be a lot quicker so I don't know what is going on with the BMW. I've used other launch tools with the BMW, it's been absolutely fine but this one doesn't seem to like it. Also, I noticed we've got a blue light up there, it was orange I think before, I don't know if that's to do with charging now that it's reached 100% or not but as you can see this is way quicker, it took 20 minutes. Uh, and this time it's finding all of the modules. So uh, yeah, I don't know why it was misbehaving with the BMW, but this is a whole lot quicker. Uh, but yeah, we've got a couple of codes. It gives this summary of what's wrong. Body control module, uh, license plate lights. Uh, we've got something, uh, oh yeah, the puddle lights. And then I think there's an issue uh, with the car configuration data, which is there since it was brand new. I've never been able to fix it, but it doesn't seem to change anything. So that's all fine. Let's have a quick look again. We were looking at the resets before. Um, I know on the Ford, pretty sure the oil reset won't work through the OBD2 port, but let's see what happens. Special functions, let's see, manually reset service. So it looks like, yeah, it just gives a set of instructions for how to reset the oil light on this one. But that's quite useful, so you don't have to keep looking it up in the service data or anything like that. So that's what happens on there. And we'll quickly go back to the main menu. Upgrades, so it's got all of the uh, things that we can update. All of these I think are at the latest zero upgradable firmware. Yeah, I updated this earlier today. Uh, but overall, yeah, it does seem to be a really nice unit. Uh, it just seems to have a bit of trouble with certain vehicles. As you saw, it took forever in the BMW at detecting stuff. Absolutely no problem in the Ford. Um, and I think that seems to be the case with many scan tools. Some of them do have problems with certain vehicles. Often it's just a very specific vehicle of a certain age group or something like that, not just uh, BMWs across the brand. Uh, you know, it might just have an issue with the E90 series of vehicles from a certain build range just because they used a certain ECU or something like that that can um, cause it to slow down. But anyway, that's the CRP429C, and I'll put a link to this if you're interested in taking a look at it in the description down below. But I hope you enjoyed the video, and until next time, thanks for watching.